Well, what a beautiful, wonderful Christmas special this is. I trust and pray that you're enjoying it as much as I am. And Bev and I want to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. We need these special moments, don't we, at a time like this. So thank you so much for joining us. In fact, on Christmas Day, we've got another special, a very special Christmas Day service uh, at 9 a.m. It's going to be streamed live and you're welcome to check that out as well. So, hey, I hope and pray that you have a wonderful holiday, Happy New Year and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to have a check out of a kid's clip that's on a YouTube channel, a special Kiwi Christmas clip. And so thank you for joining us. Love you all so much. Merry Christmas. A very Kiwi Christmas. Hmm. Mm hmm. It was the night before Christmas, an afternoon sky, while mum was unpacking her bacon egg pie. The kids were all playing, enjoying the sand, but dad's mind was drifting to a far away land. This magical evening at the ends of the earth, some 2,000 or so years since the Saviour's birth. On a trek through the wilderness went Joseph and Mary. It can't have been easy. It must have been scary. But the promise she carried inside of that tummy gave her strength to go forward. A super tough mummy. Christmas and NZ. Things couldn't be better. The long days, warm ocean, the spinach and feta, the cricket and soccer, the sock with the jandal. Though wearing a Santa hat gets too sweaty to handle. Barbecues roaring, pavlovas waiting for later, and Dad still wondering what it was like all those years ago on the other side of the equator. Nighttime had fallen, relief from the sun, but after such a long journey, it had still only begun. Not a room could be found throughout Bethlehem City till an innkeeper finally offered his stable in pity. What relief they both felt after all that turning away, finally settling down amongst animals and hay. That night, Jesus was born, and not a moment too soon. Is it meant for New Zealand? We don't have to celebrate Christmas in June. That first Christmas night, it gave us salvation even all the way here, in this beautiful nation. So let's not take for granted our bright Kiwi Christmas. Let's share in the joy and the peace and the richness. Sit under that Christmas tree or the nearest Pohu to Kawa, from Bluff to Kaitaia, Gore to Otara. And share the story of Jesus with all your whānau. He's still the reason for the season since ages ago. Christmas, <laughs> Said the night wind to the little land. Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little land. See what I see A star, a star Dancing in the night With a tail as big as a kite With a tail as big as a
have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. These words were spoken by an older man by the name of Simeon. He is described as just and devout and he was promised by the Holy Spirit that in his lifetime he would see the coming Christ, the one who would come to be the saviour of the world. In John chapter 1, we hear a different account from John the Baptist, where he says, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am unworthy to untie. A few verses later, it goes on to say, the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is John the Baptist, uh, greatly respected prophet of the people. He was widely acknowledged as a genuine man of God. And I share these two accounts with you to illustrate the point. As we celebrate Christmas time, many of you have heard the accounts and the fanfare of that day of Jesus' coming. Maybe you've heard the story of the angels appearing to the shepherds in the field and the star appearing to the wise men to follow to come and see the birth of the Christ. But long after that day, after the fanfare of that moment had died down, people were still encountering and being astounded by the reality and goodness of Jesus the Christ. In fact, long after the shepherds had returned to their field and carried on caring for their flock, long after the wise men had returned to their distant land, people were being amazed and astounded by the light of the world, Jesus. See, all these people I share accounts from and many more I don't have time to share with you, these were people who were greatly respected. These were people who were looked up to for having a r amazing character. And they're the kind of people that you and I may look up to and respect today. And all these enviable people upon meeting Jesus, they came to the realization that they had met someone greater they would meet someone who was beyond comparison. They clicked in themselves that they had come into contact with the light of the world. See, obviously Christmas time is widely known. Hopefully you know it as the birth of Jesus. And I think it's fair to say that any time a baby is born, it's a moment of celebration. You know, when a child comes into a family, there's rejoicing, there, there's, there's, there's a great celebration in that family. And as a father of four kids myself, I, some of you would think I've had more than my fair share of experience of those moments. But an even greater joy exists in the birth of our own children, and that is the fact that on that day, there was a baby who was born in whom the fullness of God dwelt. On that day, a baby was born and the only baby that would ever be born that was qualified to take away the sin of the world. The light of the world had come. I think it would be fair to surmise that any one of you who are watching and myself included who's lived long enough has had seasons in their life of darkness, times of hardship or trial and I think those times of darkness are the kind of things that we're in no hurry to repeat. Those times of darkness are things that we wouldn't wish anybody else to walk through. 
And as I recall some of those dark times in my life, I, I can remember with desperation and urgency, looking and seeking out for just a glimmer of light, just a, just a little bit of hope. And that, that glimmer of light, that hope that we look for, it speaks to the fact that the darkness we find ourselves in right now is not actually all encompassing. It's, it's there is a way forward and that is not gonna last forever. You know, in that moment of darkness, the light is the most precious thing to us. It's impossible for us to ignore it. But what if I told you that perhaps the greatest darkness that humanity has ever experienced, many of us live our lives with absolutely no awareness of its existence. So you and I, we were created by God on purpose and for a purpose. That purpose was for, to, for us to be in unbroken relationship with the God who created us. His desire was, was for us to walk and talk with Him. He loves us with an everlasting love. And despite this purpose and this love, humanity found itself going off track. We found ourselves derailed in this purpose because of our sinful human nature. And we find ourselves in our humanity with no way of reconciling us back onto the right track with God. We, we find ourselves at an impasse. And so for many of us, we've just gone about embracing the brokenness, embracing the, the broken purpose, embracing the darkness that we find ourselves on and getting on with our life. But God wasn't willing that darkness would be all we knew. In fact, he desires that we would know the joy of walking in that purpose and that life that we were created for. So he came and he himself made a way where there was no way. God kicked off his plan to dispel that darkness on that holy night when the light of the world was born in a manger.
That baby, born on that holy night, the light of the world, would go on to be called many names. Perhaps my personal favourite given to him would be Emmanuel, which in Hebrew means God with us. Also in his lifetime, he would go on, go on to do amazing things. He would perform many miracles. He would astound some of the time's greatest intellects and ultimately defy the human nature, living a sinless and blameless life. The light of the world's life led him ultimately to death on a cross. See, he fulfilled his duty as the light of the world when he removed every obstacle that stood between you and I and God. He paid dearly so that we, we, we could know forgiveness, so that we could once again know what it was like to walk in the purpose we were created for, to be in relationship with God, who he designed us to know. So on this Christmas time, as we celebrate and we give gifts, perhaps you're someone who needs to receive the greatest gift you could ever receive, the gift of being made right with God. The Bible tells us that to receive that gift, all we need to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus was who he said he was and he did what he said he would do on that cross. You can pray that a prayer right now, confessing your faith in him and your desire to live an unbroken relationship. You can pray that in your house, in your car, wherever you are, God will hear your prayer. And perhaps you've said that prayer, we would love you to reach out to us. We'd love to connect with you and encourage you and celebrate in that amazing decision that you've just made to step back into right relationship with God. To do that, you can click the link in the description on whatever platform you're watching on right now. And we wanna celebrate with you and send you a Bible. Also, maybe you're watching and you wanna find out more about City Impact Church or connect with us online. We'd love to invite you to check us out on our website, cityimpactchurch.com. And we've included lots of links in the description for that as well. Lastly, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. And I pray that every one of you would have a blessed and joyful Christmas as we celebrate the light of the world. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Oh, joy to the world. Joy to the world. Oh, joy to the world. The Lord is come. Spring!